Welcome folks, today we're going to talk about mining on Linux. Uh, basically, um, I'm going to show you how to set up a uh, miner on Linux and how to uh, overclock and fiddle with memory timing so you can get uh, 50 mega hash on a Vega 64. So uh, let's get started. Oh yeah, and by the way, if any one of you uh, want to skip the tutorial? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a cheat sheet link in the description so you can just follow the instruction from the the actual cheat sheet. But uh, if you want more details, uh, follow through. So basically, um, I got a fresh Ubuntu server install that I'm gonna connect to. Uh. Seriously? Warning. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Uh, seriously? Why? <sighs> well, it's the first time I get this error. Um, it's not. It's not the first time that, uh, like, I've uh, reinstalled the system like three times and. Uh, I probably like created like a few keys too many for for that system. Uh, it's not that. Uh, oh shit! Okay. So I don't know. Not a directory. Okay. Well, what the fuck is it? Uh, so I can't open it. Command not found. No. Okay. Uh. So I already have a key for one fifteen. So if I come in and just delete the thing, I suppose. Uh, I suppose it could fix it. I'm not sure. Let's see. Mm. Yeah. Sorry for the delay, boys. Technical difficulties. All right, fresh install, Ubuntu server. Let's get started. Basically, first thing you want to do whenever you get, uh, whenever you have a fresh, fresh distribution of Linux, you want to update and upgrade so that uh, meh. If there's any vulnerability in the packages that it, that came installed, you're just gonna have an option to uh, to patch them. So let's do that. And then uh, what we're gonna do? We're gonna change the the grub file because uh, by default the uh, AMD GPU module 
does not allow for overclocking or underclocking. So basically you have to go and change the grub file so that the kernel loads the module with like a mask so that uh, so you can access the PP the PowerPlay features and then basically you'll be allowed to uh, overclock and underclock. In this case we're not gonna overclock, we're actually underclocking to get the better hash rate. But uh, so yeah, that's the next step we're gonna do whenever uh, whenever we're upgraded. Here, here I'm gonna change that. Like I have a reboot. Technically, you should reboot after you update Grub. But the thing is, like after that, we're gonna install. <clears throat> we're gonna install um, ROCM to uh, to make the mining work. And basically, after that, you need to reboot too. So we're just gonna reboot after this whole segment. So we only have to reboot once. All right, so let's do it. We're gonna go in root mode for uh, for a minute, just so uh, I don't have to type sudo all the time. And basically, yeah, you wanna add that line here. that specific piece right here and boom and that's it So next, we're gonna install uh, these two things that uh, that's needed. Then we're gonna add the key for the AMD repository, and we're gonna add the repository update. These couple lines, this is part of the uh, ROCM install. Well, technically, I only need root because I'm going to work through systemd, but I'm going to add my user too so that we can test along the way. Use a couple things I don't really know what it's about, but. Uh, and then here's a big chunk of install. Basically, all the things that uh, that's needed for uh, OpenCL mining in general, and probably uh, you could probably run TensorFlow at this point. Well, after it's all installed, which is something I'd like to do in the future, get into machine learning, but um, not there yet. But this is gonna take a few minutes, uh, quite uh, quite a bit. Oh, that's getting better. So, uh, so yeah, I can talk you through uh, the rest of the steps. So basically, after the reboot, we're gonna we're gonna be able to mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install Tim Red Miner, which is uh, my you know f current favorite miner. It's not their latest version, but I don't really need need it because they didn't really change anything that affects me since this version but like if you're on a if you're gonna be mining on FPGA as well the, their latest version supports it all right and then yeah we're gonna edit the uh, start script change my uh, mining address and then we're gonna download MD memory tweak which is a piece of software that 
enables you to uh, change the memory timings and then um, yeah after that we just uh, set up uh, a file that systemd is going to start automatically so basically whenever you restart your rig systemd will just uh, just going to boot up all the things automatically for you so so this is a my i mean i'm running a vega 64 on this rig but technically you can you could use this tutorial to run like any gpus that that is supported by the amd gpu driver which is a lot like they they go back to the rx 470 so so like if you have like a a desktop amd gpu that's been made like within the the last seven or eight years it's probably going to be supported by amd gpu so and so if you don't if you have anything else than the vega 64 you're gonna need to figure out like different memory timings and different overclock settings but yeah that's about it so that's downloaded um so we're gonna move on to the next step root mode because this command just can't sudo it somehow I'm not sure why and then we're good to reboot so basically at this point we should be able to mine um, I'm gonna test it off the bat I think so so what I'll do um, I'll test the mining and then uh, we'll get the memory tweaks and then I'll test the mining with the overclocks and then I'll test the mining with the memory timings so you can see like the the hash rate difference and then I'm just gonna set up uh, system D to uh, to start up everything <clears throat> yeah so my system is rebooting now um, My network card always hangs like at a at boot up, so it's gonna take like an extra thirty seconds because it's already done. Uh, but yeah, like if you uh, if you need to like these settings, you can find like when we download the uh, Team Red Team Red Miner. I'm just gonna show you. There's like they have like a bunch of readme that are specific to uh different mining case so like if you don't have a vega 64 or, or like if you have some radon and seven so well they, they have settings for those which they're pretty awesome radon sevens i i own three of them and they 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 push like a little bit over 100 mega hash second per card and i think they're they're able to go like to 110 like if you if you have like a liquid cool solution which I don't but whatever um. see it's not online yet I mean it's there it's just it's not available yet so yeah if you guys have anything uh, any advice maybe I'm doing something wrong or I mean I'm not like a Linux expert so if you see something that uh, I could do better or if like you have a a way to get more hash rate for uh, Vega 64 and 
feel free to let me know. So we'll uh, go ahead and download Team Red Miner. Extraction. So yeah, if if you have like a so there's there's different guide that you can use depending on uh, on what you're gonna do, and they're pretty uh, detailed guides. So here I'm just gonna modify the the startup script. This I'm just gonna add my address in there. So save the file and we're going to try to mine. Technically it should be working. Yep. So we're going to have like a preliminary hash rate, but it's not going to be accurate. So we're going to have to wait for the second one to know the, the correct number. So yeah, the AMD GPU, like off the bat, the the fan curve that comes like with the default like setup, it's not great. Like the, <laughs> the temperature is going to get up to 90 C and the fans only gonna be like at 50% while your GPU is cooking. I don't know why they use like stupid setup like that. They should know better, but whatever, that's what it is. So this is the hash rate you're gonna get like with a, you know, a standard setup. The core is like, the speed is just, it's too, too high. You don't need that, that high frequency for, uh, for mining. But anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, ah, basically I'm just gonna show you the difference if we just uh, overclock it. So And apparently when I do that setup, it changes the fan speed automatically. So maybe when I force performance level, the, the fan settings are different. Not exactly sure how, how, how they do it. So basically at this point, should be, should be getting some uh, decent ashes. takes quite a bit longer to generate the DAG file, but it's probably because the, the clock is lower now. Oh, shit. So yeah, I have an unstable card. I wanted to, uh, I tried to, to crank it up just for the tutorial, but basically I need to run it a bit lower because it's unstable so I can already see that uh, it's not happy but yeah this, this like it's almost like it, it like rejected the 
the clock settings that I gave it. But basically, uh, this one, this is what you should expect, 44. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put whatever is table setting I have for that card. And uh, I'm going to run it again to you guys uh, that it can be fixed. Like So basically, if you have like an unstable card, just drop the clocks a little bit lower and it's going to be fine. See if I uh, start it again. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be happier. So I wanted to put like 50 megash in the tutorial, but I know this guy, this guy's just gonna run at 46. But in my title, I'm gonna put 50 anyways. But, uh, and if you go through the tutorial, you'll know uh, you'll know what's up. So yeah, it's more happy now. It's interesting that the fans running like it should. So, so I guess that when you change the uh, power DPM setting the fans actually run basically what they should be running at so there's that because uh but yeah it's happier now so i get about 40 with the the bad card and 44 with the good one so at this point uh what i'm gonna do i'll i'll get the uh i'll get the memory tweak This one we're gonna compile. Oh yeah, we need to get this thing to dependency. And then uh, compile it. All right, so at this point, I should be able to just run this command and it's gonna change the memory timing. Permission denied, of course. Successfully applied. So basically, that changed the setting for card 0 and card 1. So if you have more or less card, you're gonna have to change it here. And at this point, uh, I should be able to get the 50 megash. So yeah, the, the weaker card is gonna more, be more like 46, but the, the good one is gonna be 50. 50.9, so more like 51, but whatever. So yeah, it starts uh, with the the wrong number, but it's just that the way that they uh, they calculate the thing. I'm not sure. Uh, it's not it's not great, but after a while, it adjusts it adjusts properly. Basically, the next next time it reports it. Yeah. So. 44, meh, thought we'd get 46, but whatever, 50.8, so yeah, that's pretty close. I guess it could adjust a little more, it's, it's trying to find like the best configuration. I'm curious, curious if we're gonna get to the 46, I wouldn't be surprised. But it's gonna fluctuate with temperature and like other factors. But yeah, anyhow, it's good enough. 
So at this point, I'm just gonna hard like I'm just gonna shut up these fans. All right. So next step, we're gonna we're gonna make the file. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I put it. Uh, So basically, we take all this from here to here. Oh, and that's gonna turn the fan full speed, overclock the underclock the cards, tweak the time the set up the memory timing, and then start the miner. And then we need to make the uh, the file executable, so that since systemd can can execute it. So at this point, we're gonna set up um, systemd so that uh, it starts the service for us. I'm not like a systemd expert, but since we have to set up this file and then I use uh, rc.local so, so what I do, I create the, the file and that's gonna call the script And then we need to search mod Darcy local so that it is executable, and then we enable it so that system D uh, system D is gonna automatically run it. So technically, we if we reboot, it's gonna start all the things automatically. But we can start it manually. And yeah, I know it worked because the, the fan turned on. So, so if you want to know what's going on, you can use a status. And basically, you can see like there's like a, a dump of whatever. It goes in the the print buffer so every time like it's gonna just give you like a partial down but if you refresh you can know that uh, it's actually working so so yeah that sums it up for the uh, tutorial hope you uh, you can get something out of it and uh, if you do maybe leave some comments I'll be happy to uh, to get your input. Thanks for viewing.